event, uh, but normally, oh, there we go, Oculus Connect. But you can choose to go into tons of different worlds as well. Uh, it's pretty cool. Hey guys. Nice to meet you all. Hi. Increase accuracy in pinpointing and resolving performance issues. Now with all our goal is to make it easier and faster for you to create the generation of VR experiences. When you build an app, we want to help you more effectively reach your audience. Understand how your app is performing. So no one can hear me unless I press. We'll be adding purchase on metrics into our developer analytics. So no one can hear me unless I press a button to, to talk, to press my microphone. But as you, see, as you can see, we're in a private room here. And uh, these are all real people as well. They have their own avatars. And my avatar is here. I'll show you what I look like. This is me here. That's my avatar. So you can stream anything from your computer here, absolutely anything, any software whatsoever, whatever's on your computer will be shown here. It's an awesome way to force multiply your marketing efforts for your apps and get people really excited about VR. We re yeah, you caught that. <laughs> We recently shipped the ability for you, our developers, to create these mixed reality videos. It's already supported in our Unity and Unreal integrations. And later this fall, we'll be adding native support, along with a tool to make it just Finally. as easy for content creators to be producing these mixed reality videos. Pretty cool, right? We're also working on features that are good. So the speed of the stream will depend on the connection of. Uh the internet of the, the admin in this room who created the room, as well as your own internet. So it's advisable to have 5G and to have the router near your VR headset. It's actually great for Rift developers who've been with us since the very beginning. Your reach extends when more people can access the content that you've created. Ooh. It means you can build high-end PC go. experiences and also take advantage of the biggest possible market. Quest owners who have a game PC will have access to the deep library of stellar Rift content. They'll have the best of both worlds. The best games from Rift and connected to a PC and the portability of us. So you can choose to mute everybody, which is what I just did. Quest have even more options. Remote rendering is fantastic for development too. You can it more quickly by running on a PC while streaming the output to your Quest. Simply hit the play button, Unity or Unreal Oculus plugin, and you'll be able to preview right on the device. No need to compile and train new APK first. This, yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm excited about it. So the other big announcement we're waiting for is um, for Oculus to let us know if we can actually stream any content from our PC directly onto our Quest device wirelessly, because this is wireless. The cable I have here is the sound that goes into the computer. Uh, but there's actually no cables for this headset whatsoever. Uh, but we can't play or we can't use any software on our computer directly onto the headset. So we're waiting. There have been rumors about maybe a device would plug in the computer and acts as a platform to stream that content back into our headset because we can't connect the headset to the PC like an Oculus Rift or an HTC Vive or other headsets which are tethered the art methods of a deep learning to understand the location and pose of your hands using just the onboard quest cameras no need for additional cameras active depth sensors or extra processors wow instead we use model based tracking and deep neural networks to accurately infer where your hands are and what they're doing including exactly what your fingers are doing and then we reconstruct those poses nearly instantly into vr we're doing all this in a mobile processor without compromised cpu or gpu and we're also using our inclusive AI frameworks to test hand tracking for a wide range of people and environments. Early next year, we'll release a beta for clusters and launch an SDK so that you can start these new action mechanics in your app. So hand tracking is really big because basically at the moment we're using these remotes, uh, these touch controllers they're called, but if later we can actually use our hands to grab things, to do things, that's really gonna open up another dimension in virtual reality because 
You can really have the sensation like driving a car, operating machinery from, uh, from, from further parts, robots, you know, all these kind of things. So that's going to be really amazing and, and step away from a gaming kind of feel as to using a uh, controller. But there's still a to go until it's as easy, seamless and fun as it should be to find and form communities in VR. To get there, we need to enable more ways for communities to form and grow and more things for them to do and share. We think about this in three ways. First, social interaction should be possible across everything in VR. So we're building social features that let people connect, communicate, and share. Next, people need places to go and things to do. So we're building dedicated social places where you can meet people and find great new experiences. And finally, creators, builders, and community leaders need the tools to invent entirely new media, games, and even worlds in VR. This is how communities will be empowered to connect, create, and expand. And we want to do all of this at the scale of Facebook. So starting later this year, we want to roll out a completely new social layer across the Oculus platform powered by Facebook. You'll see some changes in how social features work on the platform. You'll log in with your Facebook account to use the social features Facebook is known for while using your Oculus identity. This is going to enable a lot of new ways to connect on the Facebook, on the Oculus platform. We're adding chats so you can message your office friends in or out of the headset. And in events, so you can organize a tournament to play Racket NX with your friends. And we're adding the ability to post to Facebook from VR, so you can share your favorite moments with your VR communities and groups. So posting to Facebook from VR is not actually something new. Uh, we can already do that. Um, there are no VR apps in the Google, at the Facebook, um, games area though. So if they're able to connect the games from VR uh, into the Facebook, then that would be great. So we can invite people, as you just said, to play games and compete together. Uh, but posting to Facebook and all this, this is not new. It's something that uh, we can already do. These new places to connect. We want to work with you, people, even more ways to discover your app. So today, I'm excited to announce destinations and rich presence for developers. Destinations let you define deep links in places in your app that can be surfaced across the Oculus platform. And once you've defined your destinations, presence lets people share when they are in those places so their friends can easily join them. Starting next month, people will be able to see their friends' rich presentations across the Oculus headset and in the Oculus mobile app. And of course, there's C settings so people can control what they share. Over the coming months, we'll add abilities for uh, developers to broadcast destinations across more places in the platform and places where people can share their rich presence locations on even more services, including Messenger and Facebook. And with these deep links, people can remote launch a specific VR destination from their laptop or mobile phone. It's like a portal that takes friends directly to each other. All of this improves discovery of your app through social word mouth. But now, let's talk about the destinations you're building and how we will empower people, communities, and creators within those places. One thing we know people love to do in VR is watch media. Just look at Oculus Go. It's become a top product for immersive entertainment. But we know our media is not always easy to find. And when you, you want to VR, it's not always obvious how to invite friends to co-watch with you. This all needs to be simpler. So later this year, we're making some major updates to Oculus TV on Oculus Quest and Go. The updated Oculus TV will be the go-to hub. So Oculus TV is actually really crap, just to let you know. Uh, the quality is really bad. There is content, but the content is, it's just not good. So. We VR people know that Oculus TV is not something to use. We just would not use Oculus TV. It's that simple. Uh, we don't use Facebook at all to watch VR 360 content. It's so many years behind YouTube VR. YouTube VR would be the best place to watch, YouTube, to watch content for now in VR, as well as an app called Within has some really cool movies. 
and another app called Veer, which enables people to actually uh, sell the VR360 content via their app, and it's purely focused on VR360 content only. So for Facebook to really step up their game uh, and, and provide quality content that is actually viewable and you don't actually throw up, uh, let's, let's see it, let's believe it when we see it. Change the game for our early partners. Like Baobab, their team was able to upload and preview their latest film for the legend and distribute both in and out of VR entirely using the tools in Media Studio. But beyond media, people want kinds of social activities in VR, just like in the physical world. They want a place that enables endless exploration and empowers communities. That's why we're building Facebook Garden. It's the start of an entirely new social VR world for Oculus Quest Rift. With Horizon, we're learning from our experience building Facebook spaces, Oculus rooms, and venues. But our vision is bigger. A place people can explore, and create, and connect with us in a vast, thriving virtual world where anything is possible. Where you can drop in for a quick flaw game of capture the flag with your college friends that live around the country. Or try your hand at building a tropical island and invite others to come check it out. Or organize a weekly painting session with folks who love art as much as you do. Horizon is launching with a closed beta early next year. Here's what you'll find there. A central, bustling public space where people can gather, meet, and explore great new experiences. Expressive and diverse avatars that let you represent the you you choose to be in VR. And magical portals that teleport you and your friends to great new experiences in games. We'll start with a few games built by our team, like Wing Strikers, an aerial team sport. We can't wait to see how these inspire other people. To so Oculus Horizon uh, is just going to be another social media app that you can join in VR. But at the moment, again, they're really going to have to step up their game because, of course, they have the budget and they have the engineers. So no surprise if they do really good there. Uh, but there are other apps at the moment that a lot of more people trust more, that we feel our privacy is secure. Facebook, we never know what's going on. Like right now, they could be scanning my house, all these kind of things. Uh, it is scary to think about it, but you know, in the end of the day, they are the leaders in VR, so there you go. I'm willing to compromise on that. Um, but you can use Alt Space, you can use Rec Room, where you can do a lot of team building stuff, and you can play with people and all these kind of things. VR Chat is absolutely amazing, but not really fully available on the Quest. There are also some things missing. There are certain avatars, people you can't see. You can't watch media in, in VR Chat on the Quest yet. Um, and Allspace VR is a fantastic community. We really trust each other over there. So there's already a few. So for Oculus Horizon to come up with a version of their own is really going to have to be something exceptional uh, if really they're going to lure us uh, to want to go there. Maybe it's just enough to see our friends from Facebook there. Maybe that's good enough. Who knows? But we're going to need some convincing. So not something really, really huge uh, in terms of announcement here today. Moderation tools, so you are always in control of your experience. All of this is hard to get right. Okay, I'm gonna check if the live stream is still working. I'll be right back. I'll leave the sound on. Over time, Horizon will get even better, even more to explore and do as communities grow and thrive, because anyone can help us create this world. We want to build the next generation of virtual communities together with you. Horizon is launching the closed beta early next year, but everyone here at OC6 <coughs> will get an invite to join. So. You'll get an early look at new experiences, see what we're building is your own. This is the next step on the journey towards VR with people at the center and the world. I mean, you can think with Libra because they're going to be launching their own token, which is not a cryptocurrency. Uh, so it's not decentralized. It's going to be a centralized token. Uh, you can imagine if they really are going to build a grandeur like the film uh, Ready Player One, where people can actually go to school, they can work. I mean, the future of jobs, if robots are going to take our jobs, are going to be in the digital space. So. 
um, you know, we are going to need a platform that's powerful enough to power all these kind of things. Every day at the corporate office, we make decisions that impact the team members at the hotel. So we really needed to make sure that our corporate team members understand the complexity of working in a hotel. Oculus for Business has really shifted the way we work. We can truly upskill team members faster and really focus on empathy building. This is really, really, really good because this really shows how the Quest works. It's a good, uh, good case study. The virtual factory tour became a use case that was a no-brainer. It was, this is what we really need to do. We can now take anybody and we can give them the factory experience from their desk. It's real. I mean, it's a real representation of what the factory looks like. Besides saving money on travel, it's a safety factor. This is that ultimate bridge to break those barriers down. Oh man, that was awesome. <laughs> Fantastic. The way we see the potential of Quest is that much lower barrier of entry. The fact that I showed a car that I'd worked nine hours on, that's something on a time scale that we've never done before. I knew this was going to be a big deal. These, uh, these testimonials are real. I, I, I confirm that this is real. Uh, since I've gotten my quests, uh, we've done so much content with Olympic people, famous people in China and Singapore, as well as creatives and a whole bunch of different guys. and. Everyone has said exactly the same thing. So this isn't just some, you know, enhanced corporate video. It's, it's true. This device is very powerful. <laughs> it is completely wild, isn't it? I see this video and I get chills again and again. From the first day I started working here, all I could think of is how we could harness this technology for work and not just my work, everybody's work. As a technologist, it was tempting to approach it with an ROI calculator. How much money is saved at the manufacturing plant, at the store, at the office? But looking at how companies use VR today, what I found is that the impact of VR goes beyond what can be easily measured. With VR, employees build empathy for each other and their customers. They strengthen the company's culture, and they become high-performing teams. For example, the teams at Eon Energy, they collaborate across distance. They're being more communicative and more productive. All the Walmart, the Walmart associates. OK, so we're going to go and try and find another way to view the Connect 6. Uh, it's a bit hard to hear what she's saying at the moment, and it's not really that, that useful, to be honest with you. All right, let me just make sure that everything is working on the live stream again. Yes, it is. Okay, great, fantastic. Uh, so we're gonna go and check out one of my friends. Uh, we're gonna go to YouTube VR. His name is Romarcus. He has 15,000 more followers uh, on, uh, on YouTube. And uh, right, let me try to find him. So I can use voice. Um, okay, I have to press it again. Remarcus. Remarcus. Okay, that's his channel there. And he's doing a live, uh, or he's supposed to be doing a live feed. So, or maybe he's doing it on Facebook. Let me, let's go to his channel. Videos. Ah, there we go. He's doing it live. Fantastic. Let's join him and say hi to him. Hi, Remarcus. Around the world with virtual reality training so surgeons can learn, rehearse, and master skills. So this, uh, this live stream that he's doing, it's the first time I'm, I'm using... Uh, YouTube VR to look at a live stream. It's very different from the PC. On the PC, you can type in the comments. You can see the person moving. Uh, he's only got a picture for some, some strange reason. And it doesn't seem like I can type. Can I type? No, I can't type. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave here. And we're going to go to our browser.
So I'm going to go to browser. Will it load? Okay. So uh, let's go to YouTube. So if we're accessing YouTube through the browser, basically this is a browser, uh, just like the normal internet. In fact, if I had a Bluetooth keyboard hooked up to my Oculus Quest, I could use a keyboard right now to, uh, to type. So we're gonna go and search for Marcus. So we're gonna actually be looking at the desktop version of uh, YouTube as opposed to the uh, YouTube VR version. So go, okay, there's his channel. Oh, I haven't subscribed? No. Maybe I clicked unsubscribe by mistake. Oh, I have to sign in, okay. Oh, that's why, okay. Uh, let's click there, let's go. you'll see those trained in VR completely okay let me sign in so that I can actually in any environment in but he's not moving though so but we also need to meet top chat requirements of enterprise workflows. welcome to live chat remember to guard your privacy oops let me go back can I go back okay here so how do I chat using VR Play. Okay, the stream's going to play in a second. Let's refresh the page. This is not a phone. This is a cafe. A photographer, a pet groomer, a music studio. And oh, there we go. Hi, chat. And a cake shop with GoDaddy. Anyone can make their idea. Can I reality. type? Find the perfect Say something. Domain okay, name. great. Build a better website. Protect it with. So the ad is. The ad is just running, and then the stream will come back live in a second. So Remarcus is based in the UK, and he's opening a VR arcade over there. Hi, Marcus. Hi. I'm live streaming you. On Facebook. Using the browser. On Quest. Uh, your picture is not moving, though. Your picture is still. Send. Okay, let's see if my message went through. Yes, it did. Hi, Marcus. Hi, I'm live streaming you on Face using the browser on the Quest. Your picture is still. <laughs> Some people say that he fell asleep. <coughs> Yes, that's very possible. Okay, so let's uh, go back to Oculus Connect. On the same infrastructure with the same principles. Companies also need to know, uh, companies also need peace of mind when their business is on the line. So we are providing enterprise-grade customer support. It includes a new help center with a dedicated team to keep operations running. We know that there is a lot more that we can do, so we are not stopping here. We have a full... Okay, we're going to go back to uh, YouTube VR. I just want to show you the difference. So, uh, Remarcus. Let's do it again. Re... Remarcus. Nope, let's do it again. Remarcus. Okay, never mind, let's type. So the voicing is not exactly uh, perfect. Remarcus. And if I say Remarcus, they, they don't know what I'm saying, so that's why I have to say re. Remarcus, there we go. Very cool guy, he does a lot of uh, stuff with uh, games, video games. Uh, 
very cool guy. He's helped me a lot in uh, learning how to do VR and also, in and also inspired me to do the VR Essentials channel. I met him before I started all this VR stuff. I've been up on stage talking about VR's coming moment. That moment where it goes from R&D to fully based. So I can move the screen and I can also put it further away so it's not so close. So VR is happening now, right? Let's listen. About four months ago, we launched Rift S and Quest, and the response has been incredible. Again, consumers are buying them as fast as we can make them. They're returning to VR week after week, and they're buying and experiencing and loving a lot of content. Well, the fact is that uh, yes, there's been a lot of headset sold, I think something like 10, 3 million or 4 million. But on the grand scheme of things, we're still at extreme very early stages of VR. Uh, we still need many more people, but it's a good start. And now the technology is wireless, so definitely good things ahead. VR? The answer, without hesitation, is yes. Yes. We have an incredible amount of great experiences for you. Definitely. So we're building more <laughs> Agree. Day. Agree. You have questions about our hardware? Read our reviews. And if a developer asks, is this the time where I should be developing for VR? Yes. The answer is also. For sure. Absolutely yes. Agree. We're building the user base you want. We have the ecosystem you need. We have an incredible form factor. We're going to keep pushing the technical limits. And together, the developers in this room and Facebook are building the content of the future. We're doing this together now. This is usually the time in Connect where I would pivot and I would start talking about the incredible games and experiences that the developer community... So you see, Romarcus is live, you can see him moving. Uh, I just can't type anywhere, so... And of course, he can't hear me. Oculus has a new head of content and I have a new role. So this year, I have a very short time on stage. He gets to come out here and have all that fun with you. Please welcome <laughs> Mike Verdu. <laughs> So yes, VR is now, and the future has arrived, but it is just not very evenly distributed. True. One of my favorite quotes from William, G William Gibson has never been so true for virtual reality. How many of you remember that? That's the first Oculus that came out. It's a Rift DK1. First Oculus was uh, built by an 18-year-old, by the way. Absolutely amazing story. VR, it's been coming to life around us ever since. And for a while, back then, it seemed like the future would break over the world like a wave and it would carry us with it into the promised land. But that's not how it happened. It's taken years. The future came for people one at a time. Fast forward to 2019. There are millions of people entering VR regularly, and we've seen the first VR only platinum hit, selling more than a million units. I mean, that's, that's awesome. VR titles are now racking up sales numbers that are respectable in any other medium. At last, the future has arrived at enough scale that we can actually make a living there. And that's why we can finally say, VR is now. <laughs> this is not happening by magic. The future is arriving because of your creativity, your passion, and your hard work I've been around the gaming industry long enough to see the birth of multiple platforms and what made these platforms succeed? Developers and creators like you. So look around at your fellow pioneers who have carried... So the difference between YouTube VR, of course, and Big Screen, which was the app we were in just now, is that this is a solo experience. There's no one around me. I'm completely on my own. Uh, yes, I'm watching my friend who's live streaming his own YouTube channel, but I can't interact with him. Uh, but the quality of the stream is very good, uh, I have to admit. So quite impressed. You YouTube 
are amazing. They're the number one best platform for watching VR360 content without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, with Veer, Veer also are amazing. Now let's talk about Oculus Quest, because Quest is bringing the future to a whole lot more people. Uh, as you've heard and as you've seen, no PC, no tethers, no external sensors, and a time to fun measured in seconds. Yep. Quest Completely. is off to an incredible start, yep. all thanks to the experience cr experiences created by all of you. Your hard work is paying off. It's paying off in the metrics that matter to your business. For example, the average attach rate for purchased apps on Quest is higher than any of our other platforms. Yep. In fact, in the first month of Quest, People generally use the Quest for at least two hours until the batteries are gone every time. Um, it is a truly amazing device. More than 300% more copies for Quest than their Rift launch. And it's paying off for Beat Games, who made that first platinum hit. Their Quest launch... But the thing about the Oculus Quest is that it's not making any money yet. Uh, Facebook are selling the Oculus's devices Cutting, undercutting the entire market, bringing the price more than half uh, than any other headset that's available on the PC, simply because they want as many people in VR as possible. But they're not actually making any money at the moment. Thank you, Mike. And thank you, Beat Saber community, who made this all possible. <laughs> So they created one of the world's most famous game called Beat Saber. Absolutely amazing people. Back, me and Vladimir. To our surprise, it became a quickly viral hit, played by more than a million players all around the world. It shows that a successful VR game can be created even with no budget and no big teams. Virtual reality has so much unexplored potential. It can be a simple and engaging concept, which is inclusive and enables players to feel like superheroes. This May, we are proud to be one of the launch titles for Quest, and a month later, we showcased Beat Saber with 360 degrees levels. And we actually think that this new mode might be the best way how to play the game. That's going to be crazy. And it will be available for everyone this December. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I, I know that's a bit fun. Beat Saber is one of the best fitness apps you could use to keep fit, uh, to get your heart running for cardio. <laughs> Ladies and gents, this is the moment you've waited for. <laughs> uh... Yeah, that's right. In the future, there will be people who will just get 50 headsets and organize Beat Saber fitness classes in gyms. It's going to happen within a year. You see it, you watch it. Uh, it's going to happen. Get ready for your side loaded game and tracks to be broken again. <laughs> and you can load up your own, uh, your own songs in Beat Saber. You can change the color of things. You can customize things. Absolutely amazing. We're finding success in a variety of ways. They create, they refine. Let's go back to Oculus venues. Uh, I prefer watching VR with other people. Um, doing things solo is okay when I'm doing productivity, but I prefer to be with people. So let's go to Oculus venues first again. So Oculus venues is by Facebook. Big screen is not. All right, join. Let me check that we're still running the stream. Yes, we are. Okay, great. And then I'm going to take my, my chair. Each title older than the last. Their upcoming game, Boneworks, is an impressive display of physics and the use of touch. We're pleased to announce that a new title in the Boneworks universe is coming to Quest next year. So I want to change seat. We think gamers on Quest have a ton to look forward to this year and next. Thanks to the ingenuity. Join crowd. 
So the graphics are definitely better on YouTube VR. You see, this is Facebook streaming. Uh, the quality is just really not great. Uh, I mean, I'm going to stay here a while just to show you because I prefer, I like being with people. Uh, but I think after that, we're going to go back into big screen. It seems to be the best, the best social experience. That's been ILM X Labs, Vader Immortal. <laughs> Now you've all had that moment in Vader Immortal where you come face to face with the Sith Lord himself for the first time and you look up and you feel like he's actually there with you. Presence isn't just about the feeling that you're... It is an absolutely strikingly good visual game and the second episode is coming soon. But it's very fast to finish. That's the problem. So it's not actually a great experience, but it's a nice experience and uh, looking forward to more experiences with it. Well, our most upvoted user review says, <laughs> I still can't wipe this stupid grin off my face. I can't wait for episode two. And the team at ILM X Lab has been hard at work at the next, on the next chapter. And to tell you more, I'd like to introduce Jose Perez III and Alyssa Finley. We're excited to be here on behalf of ILM X Lab, Lucasfilm's immersive entertainment studio, to talk about Vader Immortal, episode two. Yeah. The latest episode of this groundbreaking VR series picks up right where the previous one left off, with Darth Vader teaching you the Force. One of virtual reality's greatest strengths is the power of presence the ability to be transported into different worlds and to connect firsthand with characters you've previously only seen on the screen, to make the transition from storytelling to story living. At its core, Vader Immortal explores one central question. What would it be like for you to be the hero of a Star Wars adventure and for you to find out firsthand Darth Vader's mysterious plans? Episode one transported you to Mustafar, and it told a new story about an unexplored period in Darth Vader's life. As that story unfolded, you discovered your own lineage, how that tied into Vader's plans, plus you trained with a lightsaber in both the episode and the action-packed lightsaber dojo. In episode two, you'll get to explore beneath Vader's castle. You'll get to use the Force, and there will be some incredible plot twists along the way. For a project this ambitious, we knew it would be important to collaborate with the right creative partners. The series brings together Maya Rudolph, two voices, Zoe 3, an award winning. Uh, the stream is pausing. Okay, I'm, I'm going to leave Oculus Venues because honestly, uh, Facebook just don't understand what it means to create good quality um, streams. They just don't get it. Uh, Hopefully they'll get a, a content uh, quality control producer who can actually sort it out. If uh, YouTube can do it, I don't see why Facebook can't. So big screen is uh, an independent app. Let's go back into Oculus Connect. Let's hope that there's room in, this, in the space in the room. I'm going to mute 
mute all so I don't hear them. And look, there's a rumba there. About an unexplored period in Darth Vader's life. As that story unfolded, you discovered your own lineage. So you can tell already the quality of the stream is much better in here. And, you know, big screen do not have the budgets that Facebook do. So there's no excuse for Facebook to give us crap quality. Let's be fair. Let's be honest. Big screen have done an amazing job. And I, we can talk to all these people. We can add them as friends uh, and socialize later. Or we could, we could debate now, in fact. Maya Rudolph, two voices, only three. An award-winning writer, David S. Goyer. So the, the stream is actually, there's a latency because we just watched that in the Oculus venues. In developing Vader Immortal Episode 2, we wanted to build upon the foundation set in our first installment from both a story and an interactive perspective. In this episode, you're going to discover more about your connection to Mustafar and the mysterious Black Bishop as you traverse the ancient Corvaxian fortress. <laughs> New creatures like the dark. You want some popcorn? Wait below the planet's surface. No. She's gigantic. Popcorn. She's mad, and she's hungry. <laughs> You'll gain a powerful weapon, the uh. Proto Saber. The unique hilt you see was designed by our teams at Lucasfilm, and it's an ancient relic that plays a central role in the story. In addition to the narrative experience, we also created Lightsaber Dojo 2. This new dojo allows you to hone your skills with a lightsaber and unleash the power of the Force on your opponents. We're super excited about the new mechanics in the latest dojo. Using only a single button, you will use the force to stun, pick up, and fling your opponents across the arena. You can even attack enemies from a distance. So the stream seems to have uh, paused. Has a stream post for you guys. <coughs> Can you guys see the stream or has it paused on your screen? For me, it's uh, not. Well, it looks pretty good. Okay. It's fine for me now. Okay. Okay, so we're going to go out the room because uh, the gentleman there said that for him he was working completely fine. So let's go to social and then we go to the lobby first. Yes. The lobby is generally where people would go first just to say hi to some people, speak to the admins. So big screen is all about watching movies in VR, by the way, in a real cinema, uh, as well as various different environments. And the, the, the amazing thing about big screen is you can watch movies in 3D uh, without any 3D goggles on. And it's just like, it's an amazing experience. Like here, it seems like there's a hologram in front of me. Uh, absolutely amazing. Okay, let's go back in. Let me check the stream is still running. Yes, it is. Where is the stream now? Yes. Vader Immortal episode okay. two is We're available back. right now on, on the Oculus Store. Oh really? Script. No, let's check it out. Let's see. Let's go to store. I'll go back into the app in a second. So they said that it was available. Uh, that is actually quite a big deal. Uh, so. Where is it? Let's go to new releases. I uh, don't see it. Let's uh, go to search. Click Star Wars. Star Wars. Okay, maybe I had to go inside the app. Let's go in, let's open it, I'll show you very quickly. And maybe uh, episode two, have to purchase from there. It's actually a very good, 
I mean, the graphics in the game are amazing. It's just that the game, they, they, they focus more on the graphics than they did on the actual length of the gameplay. Length of gameplay you can be done within four or five hours. So that's really what was a shame about the app. But the app is very beautiful. Chapter select. Okay, so 1.2 is locked. So how do we buy it? Or maybe it's not available in Singapore. We're streaming from Singapore, by the way. If you just joined us, welcome. And thank you for joining the stream. If you're watching after the live stream, thank you again for watching as well. Uh, so. They just announced that second episode of Star Wars is available. However, I don't see it. It's not here. Okay, quit. Let's go to back to the library. Maybe it's only episode one, yes. Uh, maybe it's only available in certain countries, but it's not actually available worldwide. Games, generally speaking, cost uh, up to 30 US dollars. Uh, so they can be quite costly. You have to be careful what you get. And of course, VR Essentials is all about the practical uses of VR. Uh, so there's a lot of apps that uh, are very powerful. We worked with uh, the Olympic youth team of China, boxing team, using some of the apps uh, as part of their Olympic training, uh, did some, uh, followed them for two weeks. It was absolutely, absolutely amazing. I've worked with creatives using virtual specific apps to see how they actually use them. Um, and also some DJs DJing live in VR 360. That was really, really cool too. And we're developing content for that as we speak as well. Um, okay, so let's go back to big screen beta. I don't see Star Wars, so maybe it's not available in Singapore. Uh, you can also install a VPN on your router and then access other countries using your VPN and you may have access to other, other things. Let's go back to Oculus Connect. So let's see if there's any other announcements that are pretty cool. Medal of Honor. You best believe I'm be f through the eyes of someone who is actually there. And that's been the most exciting and fulfilling part of, of the project. Oh, this this game is amazing. Oh. There's no moment in this game where like you're just relaxed, right? You're in a war zone. You are a member of the OSS, the Office of Strategic Services. That allows us to tell stories. So, of course, uh, Oculus bangs its bank on games, but uh, it has so many practical uses um, for work, for team building, for training, sales meetings, trade shows, uh, you know, and also good, fun entertainment. There's a lot of apps like this one, uh, Shooters, where, you know, uh, similarly to places where you can go and play, you can actually bring the quest and put, you know, 10, 12 people and simultaneously together shoot each other with paint or bullets or whatever you want at your heart's desire. The authenticity was everything. When you put that headset on, you feel like you're back in World War II era Europe. It's a very surreal experience to be there without being there. You're not watching history on a flat screen. You're experiencing history with your own eyes. We had the opportunity to sit down and interview combat veterans from World War II. It's very emotional and it's very inspiring. And that's what draws us to dive deep for our characters. And putting you as the player on an adventure that spans some of the biggest moments of the war. Medal of Honor franchise immediately gives us something more intimate, more cinematic. Games are at their best when they're immersive and we're finding all sorts of little things. What do you guys think so far? Excited? Having the back 
fucking uh, respawn and I'm, I'm excited. I just want them to put this game on quest. That it hasn't been pushed before. Dude, I'm pumped for the fucking respawn game. I have a rift. Yeah. I've been waiting for this fucking game for two years. I have a VR room. I'm gonna fucking I'm gonna be dropping fools. I just checked if Star Wars was in the Oculus Store. They said it was, but I can't find it anywhere. Yeah, because you're fucking lying. Bunch of, li bunch of lying sack of shit. Yeah. What? So, uh, of course, there will be some kids in some of these apps. The majority of people that I've met are actually uh, 20 and above to about 35, 40, 40 years old. Uh, but of course, I have to mute them because Facebook could take us down with all any curse words. So sorry about that. Chief scientist of Facebook. Ooh. Especially since this has been a magical week for me in that respect, thanks to two wonderful additions to my world. The first is the Control Labs team who will be joining Facebook Reality Labs to help build the interface of the future. Their EMG technology has exciting potential for delivering natural and intuitive interaction for VR and AR, and I'm delighted to welcome them to FRL. The other is the birth of my first grandson, which has made the future much more tangible to me. Thank you, it was actually way more moving than I expected. Sitting there with him in my lap for that first night with everyone else asleep, I found myself looking at his beautiful, tiny face and wondering what the amazing, unimaginable future he'd live in would be like. And of course, the one thing I was sure of was that VR and AR would be a transformative part of whatever was to come. That transformative VR future is what I'm going to talk about today, but the past and the present are the keys to the future. So let's start by traveling back to the early 1980s when I was a grad student in energy management and policy at Penn. As you can see, I hadn't yet discovered blue button-down shirts, or, for that matter, personal grooming. What I had discovered was the personal computer in the form of the Vector Graphics VIP. The Vector sported a four megahertz processor and a full 56K of memory, which was hot stuff in those days, wow. and I instantly fell in love with the freedom of having an entire computer to myself. Back then, the world we live in was just being born. The IBM PC didn't yet exist. Physical could ship for the Apple II the year before, so the first killer app was starting to make progress with early business adopters, but there were only about two million personal computers in the world, and most of them were owned by hobbyists, gamers, and enthusiasts. In short, back then, personal computers were more of a novelty than a real thing. But the more I used the vector, the more I began to believe. So when the IBM PC came out, I walked away from my PhD program to write video games like this. This is amazing. He wrote Cosmic Crusaders. No way. Wow. Classic. Absolute classic. I appreciate that because you have no idea how <laughs> hard it is to make that happen with <laughs> a few thousand instructions per frame. Wow. Amazing. Writing those games was about the most fun I ever had. Although my new direction caused considerable concern among family members who thought I was throwing away my career. That was an entirely reasonable opinion, because in 1982, personal computers hadn't really started to change the world yet. But they would. And because I had had the faith to be there at the beginning, before everything went big, I've had the opportunity to contribute in many ways. And that's what we're doing right now. To graphics and more. We're at the beginning of before it takes off regretted the decision to dive in while it was still early days and help make the future happen. Unless you lived through it though, it's hard to comprehend just how much things changed as the personal computer revolution proceeded. Here's what human-oriented computing looked like when I wrote Cosmic Crusader. Then, here's what it looked like while John and I were working on Quake 15 years later. Wow, they worked on Quake. Amazing. And finally, here's what human-oriented computing looks like on my work phone now. That is how much a truly revolutionary platform can change things over the years. Okay, back to the present. 
let's map today's VR onto that same long-term trend line. VR certainly has as much long-term potential as the personal computer. The Go fact, is I believe amazing it will headset. become the most powerful creative and collaborative environment that has ever existed, as I'll discuss later. But realizing the full Those that know and uh, follow the VR Essentials uh, YouTube channel know that we're big fans of the Oculus Go. Farther along than the personal computer was when I wrote Cosmic Crusader, what with Crack Quest and Rift S, a broad and varied app portfolio that includes a million seller, and rapidly emerging enterprise applications, all growing nicely. VR is in a good place right now, and it's easy for us true believers to see where the trend line is headed in the long run. But realistically, we're still pretty close to the beginning of what's going to be one of the great technological revolutions of all time, which is actually awesome. It means that right now we're in the most exciting place. Most of the good stuff is yet to come, and it's our community that's going to make that happen. But it also means that VR is advancing on two different timescales. In the near term, the next five years or so, VR needs to grow as rapidly as possible. Yep. And that's happening in a big way between us getting great headsets out there and a strong ecosystem built and all of you creating the application. And 5G is going to help VR mixed reality grow faster as it will be much quicker to stream content and download content. Another future after this one, the next big step on that long-term trend line, a quantum leap to a whole different level that will be built on the work all of us are doing today. And when that future arrives, VR will explode the way the personal computer did nearly 40 years ago. VR hasn't changed the world yet, yep. but it will. It will. Of course, I'm preaching to the choir. You're working on VR precisely because you believe it will change the world. Exactly. The interesting question is, when? Yep. Well, I have some good news and some bad news. We think in three years to five years. I'll start with the bad news. I've made specific predictions about the timing of that quantum leap twice before at Oculus Connect, and both times, I was too optimistic. Huh. This year, rather than making yet another prediction, I'm going to invoke Hofstetter's law. It always takes longer than you expect, even when you take into account Hofstetter's law. <laughs> the honest truth is, I don't know when you're going to be able to buy the magical headset I described last year. VR will continue to evolve nicely, but my full vision for next generation VR is going to take longer. How much longer? Maybe 10 years. I don't know. Let's just say not anytime soon. Yeah. Turning breakthrough technology into products is just hard. So that's the bad news. But then there's the good news. That quantum leap into the future is still coming, and we at FRL are making it happen as fast as we can. So what exactly will that future look like? If we're talking about the long-term future, that's easy. VRAR is, in my opinion, going to be the most significant technology of the next 50 years just as personal and mobile computing have come to dominate our lives over the 46 years since the first personal computer, the Alto, was built at the Xerox Palo Alto Research Center. Xerox Park started a revolution that ultimately led to every one of us either interacting with or being just seconds away from the virtual world almost every waking minute. That virtual world has touched nearly every corner of our lives, but there's one great limitation. We interact with it almost exclusively through two-dimensional interfaces along with very limited audio. If you think of a human as a CPU with memory, input, and output, admittedly, not the most romantic framing, but accurate, then it becomes clear that the data received on the inputs, our senses, and the actions induced by the outputs, our motor controls, must define the full range of experiences that we can have in the world. Given that, our lives are enhanced if we can bring more useful information to our senses and perform actions that have more useful effects resulting in better, more satisfying experiences, which is precisely why virtually every one of you has a smartphone with you right now. But relative to what you're capable of, that smartphone is a very low bandwidth channel. In contrast, VR and AR have the potential to give us all the bandwidth we can handle in the ways we're built to use it, and that will let us do more of what makes us human, especially socially. That's the fundamental reason why I believe VR, AR will be the... It would be great if they just got to the point because they do talk a lot of blah, blah, blah. Yes, we know all this. Come on, mate. Get to it. So to me, it's easy to predict that awesome long-term future. Predicting the next generation of VR is harder. I'm happy to share my thoughts with you, but there are all sorts of opinions about what the future of VR should, will be, and opinions are a dime a dozen. 
The most useful way to learn something meaningful about what's coming is to live by Alan Kay's great quote. The best way to predict the future is to invent it. That's what we're doing at FRL, and I view these talks at Oculus Connect as our yearly postcards from the future of VR. Today's postcard will share some of the recent progress we've made on inventing the future in optics, machine perception, and avatar. What I'm about to share is actual working prototype technology, not mocked up demos or concept art. Let's start by following up on Verifocal and the Half Dome prototype, last seen at F8 more than a year ago. The headset we shared at F8 was the result of several years of research and prototyping of advanced display systems. Half Dome was our first prototype to achieve two milestones. First, using Fresnel lenses, it supported a 140 degree field of view. Second, by physically moving the screens based on eye tracking, it changed the focal depth and kept the image sharp even when inspecting close objects. Today, I'm pleased to be able to share a new varifocal concept prototype, Half Dome 2, built by our display systems research team working closely with several other teams across FRL. Unlike the original Half Dome, Half Dome 2 is targeted primarily at ergonomics and comfort, both visual and physical. The new prototype is substantially smaller and lighter than Half Dome, largely because our optics team has managed to fold the optical path into a very small volume. Overall, we've been able to improve form factor substantially and reduce weight by a full 200 grams over Half Dome. The trade-off for that increased comfort is that the field of view is narrower than Half Dome, although still 20% wider than... Ah, the stream has stopped again. Okay, let me uh, log out the room. Because this is really, really interesting what he's talking about. Half Dome is the next generation of VR headsets that will be hitting our shelves in two, three years' time. Okay, let's go back in quickly before someone else does. Hopefully we can go back in. That would be great. Which seat am I in? Okay, I'm here. Oh. Can I sit? So it's frozen for everyone? Yeah, for me too. Not frozen for me, works. Yeah. Okay, just bring up the where you clicked in here and there should be a refresh button. Like on their Oculus Connect 6 pitch. There we go, we mute everybody. And there was an error retrieving content, try again later. Uh, are you guys seeing the content on the screen? For me it says there's an error to try again later. Okay, so it's possible that uh, they muted me. Oh. No, you don't need to. You just need to press the refresh button on the Oculus Connect 6 picture. Okay, let me try. Oh, actually, it froze on the same spot again, so... Oh, uh, mine's sort of playing on a different screen, but yeah, it's frozen again. Uh, thanks for that tip. I didn't know about that. Thank you very much for letting me know. For letting us know. It's okay. Smaller well, I think it might dome, be there and because our optics team has managed to fold the optical path into a very small volume. Overall, we've been able to improve form factor substantially and reduce weight by a full 200 grams over half dome. The trade-off for that increased comfort is that the field of view is narrower than half dome, although still 20% wider than So it it will refresh from where we we left off, so at least we're not missing out on anything. Because this guy, is <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> smaller and lighter than Half Dome, largely because our optics team has managed to fold the optical path into a very small volume. Overall, we've been able to improve form factor substantially and reduce weight by a full 200 grams over Half Dome. The trade-off for that increased comfort is that the field of view is narrower than Half Dome, although still 20% wider than Quest. The varifocal hardware has also been considerably improved, so let's take a quick look at that. <laughs> varifocal now relies on voice coil actuators and flexor hinge arrays, eliminating any points of sliding or rolling contact between the moving screen and the pod assembly. This improves on the original half dome by reducing noise and vibration to imperceptible levels. All in all, 
Half Dome 2 continues the trajectory of Half Dome toward more immersive and comfortable VR displays. But there's more. So I can tell the quality is a little bit blurry, so I'm just refreshing the screen again. It's smaller and lighter than Half Dome, largely because our optics team has managed to fold the optical path into a very small volume. Overall, we've been able to improve form factors. Ah, uh, stopped again. Okay, let's refresh. So the next time we have uh, this happening, what we'll do is we'll go on Facebook uh, to see if we can join that. another Actually, person's room. optics team has managed to fold the optical path into a very small volume. Overall, we've been able to improve form factor substantially and reduce weight by a full 200 grams over Half Dome. The trade-off for that increased comfort is that the field of view is narrower than Half Dome, although still 20% wider than Quest. The varifocal hardware has also been considerably improved, so let's take a quick look at that. Varifocal now relies... I uh, stopped again. Come on. smaller and lighter than Half Dome, largely because our optics team has managed to fold the optical path into a very small volume. Okay, uh, let's go on YouTube. Maybe because uh, there's a lot of people coming on the big screen now, so the servers are getting heavy. I have 21% of battery, so I have enough for another maybe 20 minutes, half an hour. Uh, luckily, we have other headsets to afterwards so it'll take me about five minutes or ten minutes to reconnect and redo the stream uh, okay remarkers so he doesn't do remarkers ramakas ramakas <laughs> i have to find the remarkers uh yes work remote workers Jesus. Come on, YouTube, get your voice sorted out. Right, I wish there was a way for me to. There you go, Ramakas. Go to his channel again. There we go. So the sound is dependent on his own thing. Although, to be fair, it, right now, it doesn't always work that well. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it certainly doesn't take a huge leap to imagine how doing that in VR could be far more satisfying and personal. Okay, let's go to, this is really big. This is all about tracking your face in VR. And basically you can have any, any kind of facial expression and it will retranslated in VR. At the moment, we're limited by, uh, by, by avatars built by developers. So this would be amazing. Join crown. Social teleportation, where anyone could be with anyone else, wherever they want, working with a mix of real and virtual. Let's take a very early peek at what that would be like. To set the stage, Here's a, uh, this is the stage in which codec avatar data is captured initially. Um, so um, this is where we put people in, we capture the information, and now we've done a reconstruction of that space so that now we can put a codec avatar in it. I wish to spend uh, time with uh, and not be restricted only to those people who live close by. Uh, that's the promise of it. And this is research work that we've done right here. This is amazing. This is a holographic virtual projection. Demo that you've seen, and we all look forward to, to what the future brings. Thank you. Wow, amazing. Again, there's a long way to go, but this is a genuine glimpse of the future. Wow. 
It's going to take all the innovative technology we just saw and a lot more to make the leap to the next generation of VR. But there's more to it than that. Thing to object-oriented programming. If that was all they had done, they would have been wildly successful. But they also integrated all of that into the Alto, and that is what changed the world. Similarly, new VR technologies will need to be woven together into a complete, tightly integrated platform in order to make that quantum leap. It's the sum of the parts that will deliver that breakthrough experience, not technologies in isolation, as we started to see when we put the codec avatar in a reconstructed environment. Which brings us to the question of exactly what that... So the, the quality of the stream is actually kind of making me a little bit... Uh... It's giving me a little bit of motion sickness, to be honest. Integrated next generation platform will be. But I really want to hear this. Rather than starting with technology, I'm going to approach that question from the perspective of what overall user experience we'd want the platform to deliver. And here, I'm going to return to a theme I've talked about before, my desire for a virtual collaborative workspace. For five years now, I've been wishing for a VR workspace that I could configure any way I wanted, with monitor quality virtual screens, holograms, whiteboards, and whatever, saving and switching between configurations with a click. Throw in the ability to interact with my real surroundings and use a keyboard and mouse, and that would be a great work environment. And then, if I could share virtual spaces with other people, it would become an amazingly productive collaborative environment as well. And while I'm at it, I'd, it'd be great to have the ability to manipulate both real and virtual objects with my hands, complete with haptic feedback. I would use that in a heartbeat, and I believe that it would spread like wildfire, the way personal computers did back in the day. Even better, the hardware software stacks and the overall platform needed to enable the full range of uses for that virtual collaborative workspace are so broad in general that they'd enable a vast space of applications and a flood of creativity across gaming, entertainment, communication, education, and productivity. Again, just like personal computers did. I am highly confident that a great virtual collaborative workspace would open the door to the entire next generation of VR, which in turn would unlock human potential on a massive scale. What would it take to make that collaborative workspace a reality? Well, without question, we'd need enough resolution and good enough image quality so that virtual monitors were at parity with real monitors. That would require very high-res displays and much improved optics. I personally think visual acuity needs to be 2020 or better, but that's just the start. We'd also need the ability to render at that high resolution and to either do that with a mobile GPU or transmit the data over a wireless link. And that very likely means we would need foveated rendering, which may mean we need a new graphics pipeline and would certainly mean we need great eye tracking. Next, we would need excellent real-time mixed reality so that we could be aware of the world around us and move about and interact with our desk, chair, keyboard, mouse, and other surroundings. We would also want to have persistent, shareable virtual objects in the world so that we could, for example, set up a customized team workroom or work on tech art or some code with a teammate. To do that, we would need a localized version of the live maps technology that Boz talked about. That is, a private live map of our local physical surroundings. We would also need to be able to see our hands and our body in order to truly be present in the virtual world. And we'd want to do more than just look at our hands. We'd want to use them as the intuitive, highly dexterous manipulators that they are in the real world. So we'd want both haptic gloves and hands so accurate that we can interact with both the real and virtual worlds flawlessly in mixed reality. And if we're going to be doing work with our hands, we'd want clear and comfortable vision within arm's length for hours of use per day, exactly what Varifocal is designed to deliver. We'd also want proper spatialization and propagation of virtual sounds, so virtual objects and spaces would sound as real as they look. For collaborative work, we'd obviously want the compelling avatars we discussed earlier, and we'd need accurate real-time face, hand, eye, and body motion, as well as highly realistic appearance. Less obviously, we'd need a wider field of view so that everyone in a meeting could see everyone else. That's essential for... So my camera is about the battery. I'm still... is going to stop, so I will put a new battery in my camera in a moment. And because physical objects will often be important to the discussion. And we'd want to wrap all this up with great ergonomics to make it comfortable to be in VR. And the headset power is low, so I will be replacing that in a short while. 
we'd finally have the complete platform that my dream workspace would be, could be built on. Which, I think we can all agree, would be pretty awesome. But how do we get from here to there? Well, FRL has been pushing the envelope for the last five years on everything I just talked about. We've been focused on bootstrapping individual areas, like the hand tracking Mark talked about, which originated as FRL research, because that's what it took to get to next generation technology. Now that we've built many of the pieces, though, it's time to start putting the full platform together. To paraphrase Alan Kay, the best way to predict the next generation of VR is to build it. And FRL's mission is to build time machines that let us peer as far as possible into the future. So just as Xerox PARC built the Alto and showed the way to the future of the personal computer, FRL is going to build a true next generation concept prototype with the objective of showing the way to the long-term future of VR. This prototype is going to be aimed squarely at collaborative virtual. So what does the prototype look like? It all sounds like fluff to me. It would be good to show us the actual prototype instead of telling us they're going to build a prototype. Imagine what it would mean if you could work remotely as effectively as in person, or... <clears throat> yes, we already know that VR will do that. It will enable you to work Someday, remotely. maybe even more effectively, because you could have collaboration tools in the virtual world that could never exist in the real world. People wouldn't need to live near where they work. They could live near family or where housing is. A couple of very good movies to watch uh, that describe what he's talking about. Of course, Valerian, amazing movie uh, with an underworld in mixed reality. Um, as well as Ready Player One is a very good movie because, and I recommend reading the book, in fact, because it describes how people go to school in VR, work in VR. And of course, uh, the Matrix, I guess, although the Matrix is more based on a reality that we're not aware of, that is virtual. A Valerian and uh, Ready Player One is based on a virtual world we actually built and are aware of. Clear that this is still high-risk research. At best, it will take years to get to a prototype that proves out the concept. And Hofstetter was right. So their feet keeps uh, stopping. It always takes longer than you think, and that's especially true for turning research into something usable. So there's exciting potential for that quantum leap down the road, but for the foreseeable future, VR will be all about the quest generation. Again, VR is happening now. Anyway, however long it takes to build that compelling next generation prototype, we will keep at it until we get there. Now again, this will be a prototype, not a product. You won't be able to buy it. It won't be sleek or affordable or highly manufacturable or as durable as a consumer product needs to be. It will surely come up short of my wish list in some respects. That's OK. It just needs to be good enough to show the way to the next generation of VR. The Alto was limited, slow, and expensive, and it never became a product. But it showed that the personal computer could empower people to do new, highly compelling things. And that was enough to point the way to the Mac and Windows and everything that followed. So the virtual collaborative workspace is just a starting point, a catalyst. Like the personal computer. The so my camera has stopped just to let you know, but uh, the voice is still ongoing. Some of these will be improved versions of familiar things, but many of them haven't even been imagined yet. Whatever those applications are. I will change the batteries in the camera and the headset when the headset powers off. And it will take me about 10 minutes to set everything up as there's quite a bit of coding involved in order for me to have the live stream going from my headset to the computer wirelessly. It's not as simple as plugging a cable. That promised land. And will take all of us to get there. The next leg of that journey will be built on the work all of you true believers are doing exploring the possibilities of VR and taking it into the mainstream while we work to move the underlying platform forward. And whenever it is that that next generation platform does finally see the light of day, you will be the ones poised to use it to change the world. And your faith in these early days will be rewarded at a scale that's hard to imagine today. 
Cosmic Crusader was a labor of love. It only sold a few thousand copies, so I certainly didn't do it for the money. But it was the start of a path that 15 years later led to co-writing a game that tens of millions of people would play, and that would be the template for a whole genre that's still going strong more than 20 years later. You, too, will have that sort of experience one day with VR. I mean, this guy is a legend. In the meantime, we're all going to have the adventure of a lifetime. It'll take a little more time than I thought to get to the next generation of VR, but that just means that these are going to be the good old days for longer. And these truly are the good old days. It just doesn't get any better than being there at the start and getting to create the future, and we are all unbelievably lucky to have the opportunity to do exactly that. <laughs> so hilarious. The future is waiting, just as surely as it was waiting for this kid 37 years ago. Let's go make it happen. Thank you. All right. You heard the man. Let's go and make it happen. All right, so what's next? Okay, let's connect six. It'd be great if we had a menu. So uh, Oculus Venues, Oculus Venues provides provides the uh, content absolutely live. Uh, if we go on YouTube or if we go into big screen, then the content would actually not be live; it would be restreamed. So that's why there's a latency uh, of a few minutes, or it would re respawn from the point you lost the connection. So wow, uh, it looks like it's over for now for today. So the next keynote will be tomorrow. Very exciting to hear what else they're going to announce. Today they announced the Star Wars number two, uh, also Facebook Horizon, and uh, their second generation prototype VR headset, which looks pretty exciting to me. I'm going to be very interesting to see when it will be available and what it can do. Lots to come from Oculus as they're going to talk about a lot of things, especially the mixed reality and how they're going to incorporate VR with augmented reality within the real world. So catch you tomorrow. And thank you for watching. See you later. <laughs>